What is going on guys? Jack here and welcome back to episode number 52 of Park to Prem here with Nottingham Forest. Today we have got a couple of games coming your way. The first of which is going to be against a familiar friend as we take on Lincoln City. Yes, of course, a Lincoln City team that a lifetime ago it feels like we were in charge of. They currently sit 23rd in the championship. They sold a number of their key players without ever really replacing them this summer. As a result, it should be a nice little opportunity for us to see how our kids perform. But before we get into that game, and of course the game preceding that, which is going to be against Wolverhampton Wanderers, who as you can see looking at the league table are breathing down our necks, uh, we are going to talk about some goings on off the pitch. Because we've been busy in the transfer market, everyone. Of course, last episode we discussed the transfers on the ins. Uh, one player has since joined the club officially, Lee Fisher joining us, of course, from Midgeland. We agreed to sign him last year. He looks like an absolutely tremendous young English prospect, a player who I'd like to start giving a little bit of first-team football to should the opportunity arise as the season progresses. But on the outs, we also made some pretty big departures. You can see here players going out on the last couple of days of the transfer window wanted to cash in a little bit, and cash in we did. Stefan Hahn, the first of a few players leaving us, of course he was signed for £1.3 million from Augsburg. Truth be told, he developed a little bit, but then it felt like he was very close to his potential ability. He's not really changed a great deal as a player over the last three years. In the end, we decided to cash in on him whilst his stock was high. Elsewhere, Eric De Silva has ended up going to Olympiakos over in Greece. The South African international joined us a few years ago from Sundowns after a number of loan spells. He hasn't really shown a great deal of progression. And with that in mind, I decided to ship him on. And, uh, well, he was the first of a few who left on deadline day. You can see here Milan Bohak, £36 million received from Leipzig. I think this is a really good deal for us. Signed for £11.5 million, the Czech Republic uh, under, well, I was about to say under 21 international. No, he's a full fat international, actually, with 30 caps. But to be honest, at 20 years old, he didn't show much in the way of development in his first year. And £36 million allowed me to make a bit of a, I don't want to say a silly transfer, but a transfer that I wanted to make but wouldn't have been able to make without that sale. And, uh, well, as you might be able to tell by the fact there isn't a transfer in, it must be a youngster, it must be a player under the age of 18, and that player is Christian Adebayo. Look at this guy, 16 years old, playing for Wolfsburg. Um, you can see here, he's got absolutely incredible potential. He's a super consistent player, and truth be told, he just looks like an absolutely top quality striker who my scouts think has so, so much room to grow. So he will be joining us next January. Of course, we've other, also got other players joining us next January. And when I say next January, I mean January next season. Not in six months, but after that. Of course, we've got Abdul Karim Ballo joining us also from Germany. He's playing for Bayern Munich. The 17-year-old, of course, agreed to sign for us last year for £20 million. It does mean the combined outlay of these players is £60 million. There's high pressure on them to perform, but I just think they are top quality players. Elsewhere, in terms of players who have agreed to sign for us, we've got here Gerard McGee. He is going to be joining us from Spal in a couple of years. 17 years old. Little bit of potential there. Was not a big transfer at half a million pounds. Quintana is going to be joining us from Boca Juniors this January. Um, yeah, not long to wait for this guy to come in. He looks like a really, really good Argentine prospect. Perfectionist personality at the age of 17 is always very, very exciting. Thomas Rusnak is a Slovenian? No, Slovakian. There was a 50-50 chance I was going to get it right. I've got it wrong. He's a Slovakian international, not the land of Regina, the land of Marriott Kamsik. I hope I've got that the right way around, otherwise that's very awkward. Either way, he looks like a really good prospect, 16 years old, already got international caps, bright future ahead of him. And we also have Alejandro Herrera, um, who is actually leaving us. He's going to River Plate soon enough. He is going for 8.75 million. A bit of a disappointment, this one. Signed for 5 million from Boca. Hasn't really improved. Like a few of the other players we've been selling, we decided to cash in on him. And one last player, why not? Levin Winkler. What a fantastic name that is. Joins us from Nantes in a few years' time. 16 years old. Looks like a really good centre-back option. Hopefully, he's going to live up to his billing. I always feel a bit anxious with these players that you sign for a lot of money. 
when you kind of you, you give them a load of money, they're only 16. You know, they're not joining you for two years. And there's kind of this couple of year period where you're just uncertain about how they're going to develop. You just kind of have to cross your fingers and hope the AI does a good job for you. Anyway, elsewhere off the pitch, you can see here we've raised a load of money through the sales. We are now comfortably under the wage budget, which has, as you may have noticed, increased a little bit. And it had to increase because Curse at Irk has signed a new deal, everyone. He's happy at the club. It's happened. He's decided. Actually, I quite like it in Nottingham, boss. If you give me a pay rise, I'll stay. So whilst I have lost the optional contract extension, the bottom line is he has signed a five-year deal at the club. We've got him locked down for the big future years ahead. And of course, I'm very, very happy about that. So Irk, is he happy? Is is, is he happy? He's, he, he's perfect morale. I never thought I'd see the day. How good is he going to be now? That, I mean, has to be a big question mark now, I suppose. Also, since we were last here, we did have an international break in which Ricky Picky got his first two caps for Italy, which is quite exciting. It's mad that he hadn't got any caps prior to that, but apparently with his big transfer to us from Inter, he appeared on the Italian manager's radar. So he's now got his international debut under his belt, which is very, very exciting. Elsewhere, of course, we have got the squad stadium uh, continuing to be expanded You'll see when we get to a home game at some point, there is still under expansion. We've got 7,500 seats arriving in December, which is going to take the total capacity to about 36,000, which still isn't that much. I do feel like a new stadium is going to be, I don't know, on the horizon before too long. Um, I'm pretty confident we're going to be able to sell out. Also, another thing you'll notice here, Bill Summers is English, everyone. This former Scottish international He's had a change of heart. I'll be honest, I didn't really realise the fact that he was part English as well. But at least for now, he's changed allegiances, everyone. So he's not going to be popular with the Scottish contingency. What it does mean is one of England's bright prospects in the final third is going to be starting up top for us in today's game. Look at this. This is the team for the first game. We're taking on Lincoln, as I already mentioned. Our former club, this is an opportunity for some players who don't quite get as much game time as they should to show us what they're all about. Of course, Hamada is going to be in goal. Summers is going to get a start up front. I think this might be his live commentary debut. It certainly is as a starter. So an exciting day for him there. Ionu on the right, Van Dyke on the left, Ferguson and Smith in the middle. Of course, Ferguson, the hero of the Europa League. Elsewhere, you can see Gibbons at ball winning midfielder. Ronaldo Ramirez playing centre-back for us. Of course, we're training him currently to play defensive midfielder. He actually had a, a bit of interest in him in this summer transfer window towards the end. Real Madrid and Bayern Munich both put in bids in excess of £50 million. I turned them both down. I'm hoping that's not going to be a critical error. But in a slightly bizarre way, the fact that those bids came in made me more and more certain that I had to keep hold of him and that he must have potential, right? Like, if the AI's bidding that much, he must be good. At least that's the, the logic I choose to focus on. Anyway, shall we get into today's first game? As I said, it's a double header. We've had lots of little bits going on off the pitch. I had to make a list of them today because there's just all sorts going on. Players making international appearances. Um, obviously, Ricky Picky just doing his thing. The stadium expansion, just a little update on that. The fixtures, of course, we will talk about, I think, prior to the Premier League game following on from this because this is... You know, the EFL Cup. This is a competition I'd like to go far in. And I think we'll do this Cup game. Then we'll talk about the games since you last year, which I will say have gone quite well. And of course, following on from all of that, I do want to talk a little bit about the board expectations for this season. Because of course, the next game is going to be our first league game in a live com all year, which feels a little bit mad to say. Anyway, it's our return to Sinsel Bank here. I wonder how our response and our reception would be from the Lincoln fans if this was a real scenario. Of course, we are the reason that they are in the championship. And, uh, well, we are the reason they may well be soon out of the EFL Cup as Houtenen scores near post header into the top corner, makes it 1-0. Last time we played Lincoln... Actually, I was about to say last time we played Lincoln at the stadium, but it's not the last time we played them. But the first time we played Lincoln as Nottingham Forest manager, you may remember it. It was an infamous live commentary. I think it finished 4 or 5 nil. I do wonder if that would have soured the relationship I have with the Lincoln City faithful. What I am hoping today is that we're going to see Summers get a goal or two. I want to start giving him a bit of first-team football. The EFL Cup feels like a chance to do that, as Elwell Ionu shoots from range. Isherwood collects. 
And I will say now, this Lincoln City team does not really resemble the team that was ours once upon a time. Seven years ago now, though, it's weird to think that we have been at Nottingham Forest now longer than all the time of this save game before it. All of the time at Boston, all of the time at Lincoln is now eclipsed by our Forest campaign. As Silver hits it, oh my word, Paulo Silver. He was centre-back last year for us. Today, because I've had to shuffle things around, he's playing left-back and he's just done that. Okay, I've got to ask, how slash why is a centre-back capable of that finish? I mean, not that I'm mad. What an incredible shot. He just he never did that for us last year playing centre-back. Maybe I need to play him as an inverted wing-back on the left. Maybe that is the secret after all. Either way, 21 minutes gone here. We are in control. Good to see the, the rotated team doing its thing. Worth noting, Benavidez slotting in at right-back, a player who I'm very excited about. And, uh, well, it's on his side of the pitch. He's meant to be defending. The ball's been whipped in. They've made it 2-1. And if you thought this was going to be a walk in the park, well, maybe at the moment it's a walk, I don't know, uh, through the park, in the park. What's, the, what's like a bad walk to do? A, a walk on a bad alley? I don't know. A walk in a park is like a pleasant, easy trip. What's difficult? A, a walk up the Himalayas. That's probably a little bit far. Probably a bit of an ex one extreme to the other here. It's 2-1. We're still in control even if I'm not in control of what I'm saying and I'm just talking absolute rubbish. Ferguson, Summers, he keeps it alive. Now to Smith, whipped in, headed away, but only as far as Ramirez. He goes to Huttenen. Where are we going here? Down the right-hand side is the answer. Hut you're a centre-back, son. Where are you going? He's going to Benavidez, the right-back. I've bigged you up, mate. I've said that you're the future of the right-back position here. He gives it to Smith. Back to Benavidez. Ferguson, lovely build-up play. Ionu just shoots wide of the post. That was a good, good opportunity for us. Unfortunately, in the end, the effort just wide of the mark. But well, we've got a throw in here. Ionu with it. Benavidez, cutting inside, whips it towards the back post. Doesn't find Van Dyke. Falls to Ferguson, though, who could hit it. It's blocked. He threads it to Ionu, who hits it at the keeper. He turns it round the post, and I'm not really sure quite how he's managed that. What a fantastic stop by their goalkeeper. Smith whips it in. It's headed away to Saleh. It's like Salah, but not Salah. It's the championship Salah. That's what they call him. I don't know if that is what they call him. Um, let's demand more from the team here. Overall, though, good team rating so far. Two assists for Adrian Smith. Despite it being only 2-1, I was going to say we've been in control. There's a highlight here. If they make it 2-2 before the break... Panic, everyone. That's all I can really say. McKinnon, Lapworth with it. A guy whose name I'm not going to try and say, out on the left-hand side, whips it in. Van Dyke gets it further up the pitch. Summers, he's been quite quiet up front on his lonesome today. Saleh to McKinnon. Van Dyke intercepts. Could we break away here? No. Lincoln lumping it forward. Flicked on, but all the way through to Hamader. 30 seconds left of the half. I feel like this highlight has to lead to something. What could it be? Summers tries to win it, doesn't though, and now it's Lincoln City in possession. Bring it, it forward. Maybe one last chance this half for Toza. Plays it back to Chatzioros. Taylor, he's through. He hits it. Was that Smith with the block? It was. Oh, not Smith. Silver with the block even. If Smith, our centre mid, was there, be a little bit concerned about his positioning. It's 2-1 at the break. Oh my word, that was... A nervy end to the game. That block kind of saved us. It could have very easily been 2-1 here. Of course, this rotated team isn't just a case of giving ourselves, well, a breather for our first team players. I want to give these players a chance to excel and the rotation is going to be so key this year as we compete on multiple fronts. And while Van Dyke scored a goal, I feel a bit dirty when the long throws go in, but they do equally backfire. And, uh, well, I mean, the, mm, I mean, I'd be, I would be dropping that goalkeeper. It comes back to something we talked about recently, where in ice hockey, if your goalie's having a bad game, you just take him off. That needs to be a thing in football. The keeper makes a clangor. Do not be afraid to take him off. Unless, of course, you're me, where you don't have a goalkeeper on the bench, so you can't really do that. Anyway, Iono Ferguson. Iono bends it just over the crossbar. Oh, I thought that was going to nestle in the back of the net for a second. 20 minutes left. Who's on the bench who we can bring on 
Amlo, you've not played that many games yet this year. Summers has been disappointing. Elsewhere, I'm going to bring in Boyer via Onu. We have done a little bit of rotation, as I will come to talk about prior to the first league game of the season in a live com. But it is nice just to give the kids a run out here. And to be fair, against a good championship team, um, it's been, a, I wouldn't say, a relatively good performance. They've just scored again. It's now 3-2. We can't get comfortable. We can't enjoy ourselves, apparently. Chat Zeros to Lapworth. Back to Chat Zeros. And then he's just got so much space to whip in the ball. And Young is there. Hamader in goal has not covered himself in glory. I think we can all agree on that. Ten minutes left of this game. I mean, if they get another, I'm just going to go away and cry, everyone. And you might think that's an overreaction. I think that's actually an underreaction. Anyway, it's Amlo now forward for us. He has moments of magic in him. Unfortunately, that is not one of them. The run was superb. The finish at the end of it, disappointing. Trying to beat Isherwood at the near post. He was never going to be beaten there. We have, however, got a corner, which they're going to deal with again. Ten minutes left. It's 3-2. I thought this was going to be more comfortable than this. It feels more comfortable than a 3-2 in terms of what we've seen in highlights. However, the scoreline and the fact there's only a limited time left does leave me a little on edge here. Let's go with one last shout of Demand More. Two minutes left of this game. Surely we're going to get over the line. And indeed we are. Not in the most convincing of fashions, but I would say we were the better team in that game. We should have won that one. Of course, nice to see the youngsters get an opportunity to shine. No late drama, no capitulation, I suppose, the silver lining when they cut the lead to one with 15 minutes left. I was a little bit nervy. You can see here, Adrian Smith, man of the match. You are superb, my friend. I adore you. I want to just take a quick look at the Lincoln City squad. Are there any players that we can actually recognise here? Uh, honestly, I don't think there is. This feels like it's a completely different team to the one I left, and I don't know how to feel about it. <laughs> anyway, that was only the first game of today's episode. We've got a game in a couple of days against Wolves. We're going to talk about the games since you were last here. And, uh, well, before we get into that game, we'll also discuss all the board expectations. So, uh, yeah, I will join you in a couple of days for match day. Let's beat Wolves. Let's go top of the table, shall we? So game number two is against Wolves. The I want to say the old enemy, the new enemy. The new enemy. Can I say the new enemy? Does that make sense? Look, they're new on the street. They've come up with us. We finished first and second last year. It's going to be a bit of a battle. But of course, in the first half of this episode, we didn't talk about the league or what's been going on since we last year. And that's because I want to talk about it now. Um, just looking at things in terms of the club vision, you can see what's going on here. Board expectation this season, reach the final of the FA Cup and qualify for the Europa League. I mean, the, the, it's a weird kind of order of events, but apparently we love the FA Cup here. You might think with the expectation in the league being to, being to qualify for the Europa League, which is essentially a top six finish, that that's a little bit low. Just to provide some further context, the media prediction at the start of the year was fifth. That has shifted slightly, if I'm not mistaken, and we are now fourth favourites. You can actually see, looking at the betting odds here, there isn't really one super standout team. United are the favourites, but it's still anyone's game. In terms of the Media Dream 11, this has actually been changing quite a lot, but Ricky Picky and Luis Navio make it in for us. Um, obviously, there's a few players that you might expect to be here, like Largo, like uh, who I have seen occasionally on this screen, but they are kind of being interchanged frequently. I feel like that's one of the big issues with the Media Dream 11. It seems to change on a week-to-week -week basis, and if you ask me, Largo should probably be in the Media Dream 11, not just based off his current ability, but also based off his performances. Because as you can see, in the Premier League, he started pretty well, everyone. Three assists, one goal... And well, let's speak about the games that he's done that damage in. Now, of course, last episode, we had the game against Barcelona. We lost that one 2-1, but we had some easier games on the horizon. And the first two, we cruised through. A 2-0 win against West Ham. Van Dijk and Amlo with the goals there. And then a really good win against Brighton. Ionu getting two goals in this game. A little bit of a rotated 11 started in this match. Great to see Ionu get two goals. As you can see here, the 20-year-old uh, is still improving a fair bit. So I'm, uh, well, pretty keen to continue to give him first-team football to hopefully see him continue to improve. Anyway, the next game we had against Man City was a tad more disappointing. In this game, Gonzalez got a goal for us in the 37th minute. That said, they did score from the penalty spot not long after 
Disappointing to drop points at home, but Man City are a pretty good team. Ultimately, we've avoided defeat, which was the main thing. Anyway, the next game we had against Arsenal was a very, very interesting one. In this game, they took the lead via a pla header inside the first 15 minutes. The first quarter of the hour, we were not good. We started very, very slowly. It wasn't really ideal. But from there, we bounced back and, well, we left it late. Two goals in the last 10 minutes for us. Largo with the first. My, oh, my, what an incredible strike for your first goal for the club. And then Amlo came on off the bench to get a goal for us in the 91st minute to get us the win. We left it late. We came back from behind. But make no mistake, we absolutely deserve to win this game. We were the better team. Arsenal... They would have been very fortunate, I feel like, if they had stolen a point there. Anyway, in the Champions League, we win our first game of the group stage against Ghent 2-0. Boyer and Van Dijk with the goals. We then dispatched of Everton 2-0. Gonzalez and Erk with two goals there. And of course, that catches you up to date with, of course, that Lincoln game that you just saw being the most recent. Just to look at our Champions League group, we are in a group with Ghent, Rennes and also Milan. Truth be told, we should be making it out this group. We should be... Uh, I feel like making it out in the top two. Of course, AC Milan, a team who were in our group, if I'm not mistaken, a couple of years ago now. I think in 2030, where we lost to Real Madrid in the quarterfinal, we bumped heads with Milan. I think that was actually a game where we beat them 6 or 5 nil. There was one crazy game I seem to remember. It would be nice if history could repeat itself there. And, uh, well, just to catch you up with how the Premier League is looking as we enter our first game in it, in a live com. It's close, everyone. It's very, very close. The top six teams separated by three points. Everyone has started the season very slowly. No one's really dropping points against anyone else. Um, that certainly puts the pressure on us against Wolves here, who, if I'm not mistaken, are on an absolutely insane run at home that, well, we're going to hope to put to a screeching halt. It is worth noting that Chelsea have struggled to start the year, so not looking good for post-Frank Lampard Chelsea Maybe that dynasty that he built up, those six titles in seven years, maybe that legacy's gone now. Who knows? Uh, I mean, we look pretty good. You can see Largo, free player of the matches so far. He is just about justifying the £103 million price tag, if I might say so myself. But anyway, going into today's game, we've got a fully rested 11, and it's also our best 11, which is very nice to be able to say. Navio, as you can see here, has passed a fitness test, so he can play 75 minutes. Elsewhere, Erk, with his new contract, continuing to improve a little bit, is going to start for us out on the left-hand side. Poyana out on the right wing. Gonzalez had a really good start to the year, got lots of goals quickly, maybe slowed down just a little bit, but still, four goals in the Premier League to his name. It's going to be tough for him to match his goal a game record of last season. He's going to do his best to hit it. And while we've talked about the one new signing in Largo, for Ricky Picky, it's not been the most flashy of starts for a centre-back, but he is averaging over a 7.0 rating. I'm not really going to complain too much about that. Anyway, let's get into this game, shall we? It is Nottingham Forest v Wolves. These 11, this starting team for us, it's, it's had a rest. They got the week off, well, the midweek off. They didn't have to go to Lincoln and endure now they get a chance to show us what they're made of here in the league where hopefully we're going to be coming into it fresh wolves last season they finished second we finished first goal difference was the difference maker given that we are two of the top three teams you have to imagine this game is going to be pretty significant even at this early stage in the title race anyway we've got a throw in here maybe for navio to take plays it to Urk, who takes it down very nicely he hits it his shot's blocked Going to be tough for him to get in the ball, but he's going to to Largo. And, well, that is goal number two of the season for him. Free player of the matches so far this season. He could be on course for another one, everyone. It might be a bit premature, perhaps, to say that. But you know what? 12 minutes gone here. I thought the highlight, actually, Irk's block shot there was going to be it. But, no, Irk recycles possession, gets it to that penalty spot. Largo in the right place, leaps like a salmon, stings like a bee. I can't say that I've signed him for his heading, but... Hey, look, if he can head the ball, that is something. As we discovered last episode, with his 10 finishing, he's not always going to score the one-on-ones. Also worth noting, Wolves have not got Dyer in goal. I want to check something here. Wolves' best goalkeeper is Dyer. Where is he? He's injured. I mean, that, now that, mm, I mean that's very fortunate. Because Danny Dyer is a very good goalkeeper. Not that Danny Dyer, the other one. You know the one I'm on about. The, the one in this game, not the Danny Dyer. I realise if you're not from England, you probably don't know who Danny Dyer is. 
Look, just Google it. Google it. Anyway, Asringstan United aren't playing today, so we would go top of the table with a win here. I don't want to get too carried away, but we're blooming brilliant. I say all of this as Wolverhampton Wanderers bring the ball forward. Remain calm. Piotra, big header forward. Only as far as Alvarez, though. And uh, well, Wolves content to play it round the back here. We need to well, try and win the ball if we can and then look to spring the counter quickly. But it's Torrente here down the near side. His cross is blocked by Navio, who is now going to look to surge forward. He's a leggy lad. He can run. Unfortunately, he can't dribble, as we've just discovered there. But well, the possession back in Wolverhampton Wanderers' hands. And well, they're knocking it around nicely. But Navio, he's read it like a book. And now, now he's got space. Can he break forward? He gives it to Gonzalez. Takes it past his man. Gonzalez, you score these. Never in doubt. 2-0 here before half time, And that long unbeaten run that Wolves have at home in the league, it's in jeopardy, everyone. They are in danger. Navio, again, just actively involved in the build-up here. The number three lays it inside. Gonzalez, maybe a bit of fortune the way he got that past the defender. But as soon as he was one-on-one -on -one with the keeper... He knew where he wanted to put it, and Kabongo in goal was just not going to be able to stop it. It's 2-0 at the break, and I'll be honest, we absolutely deserve that. They have been pretty disappointing Wolves in that first half, not really showing us anything. I say all of that. Things can change. There's a reason that they are, well, currently, as we enter this game, third in the league, and there's a reason they finished second in the league last year. They have the quality to shine, but I'm... Pretty delighted with how that first half's gone. As Ramos is played through, he should score this, but Toby is more than up to it. I know some of the fans were calling for Toby's head, expecting a replacement goalkeeper this season. I didn't do it. It's still on the shopping list maybe for in the coming years, but for now, Toby is our man in goal. If he makes stops like that, more than happy to keep him in the team. Sampaio with the throw in here. This is a long looping one. Erk tries to get under it. It's cleared away to Lind. Miguel Antonio. Sampaio, the right back with it now. Could go round the keeper. Plays it forward to Poyana, who should be scoring that. Point blank range. Tried to beat the keeper at the near post. He was more than alert to it. Now Largo to whip it in. Cleared away. And now maybe Wolves going to look to hit us on the break with Ramos. He is bringing it forward down the far side. Couple of men now arriving late in the box. Torrente is one of them. Toby is up to the task yet again. He's like a blooming tree between the sticks in goal, except he can move. I guess he's a whomping willow. That's, I mean, I've now, I don't think I've ever done a Harry Potter reference in a video before, but here we are. I should probably make changes. I know people get annoyed when I don't make changes, so let's make some here. poyana has been quiet today. Let's bring Boyer out on the right-hand side. Elsewhere... This might seem a little bit mad. I'm going to put Ronaldo Ramirez in the defensive midfielder position. Giving players game time in a position they're learning is really beneficial. And whilst his positional familiarity isn't all that great, he's got the attributes to play the role really well. And at two goals up, I'm pretty confident that we can put him in here, not compromise the team, give him a really good little run out playing a position that he's learning to pick up and accelerate that development in terms of positional learning. Ball whipped in. I mean, Largo scored again. It's Irk linking up with him again. 10 finishing, they said. I mean, if 10 finishing is good enough to score that, it's good enough for me. It's 3-0 here. And there's still 20 minutes where you have to imagine now for Wolves, it's a case of damage limitation. Irk's initial cross whipped in and blocked. Fell back to him kindly. He whipped the ball into the near post. Largo as a Mazala. Had gone on a wander, found himself in the penalty area, tooked it away nicely. And, uh, well, at 3-0, I think it's game set and match. It could get worse for them, though. Gonzalez skipping past everyone, all on his lonesome. He's tried to chip. I'm not sure who he's tried to chip or why he's tried to chip it there, but it's landed straight in the keeper's hands. It's a bit like when players try to Penenka uh, penalties and the keeper just stands still and catches it. And it's all very awkward. Anyway, we've got a corner here. Largo, the goal scorer over it. I mean, he's on for the hat-trick at this point. And Ricky Picky, he's yet to score for us there. He's not going to get a much better opportunity than that. It was quite a tame effort. It was like he was showing some sympathy to Wolves with the way he struck that straight into the keeper's arms. We've looked absolutely dominant here. Very, very happy with what we've seen from the team. I mean, I'm saying that like it's over. There's still more. There could be more here. Boy, yeah, just can't quite get there. Sampaio, though, 
reads the play nicely. And I will say Sampaio at right back, obviously, he had big foots to fill in um, uh, in Regina. But he's he developed really well and he's continuing to improve at right back. And at 21, 22 years old now, still got plenty of years ahead of him to continue that development. He's looked good in this game as well, as has Navio, actually. Been very, very happy with the wing back's contribution in this game. There is five minutes left for Largo to get a hat trick. You have to imagine he's going to be going forward at every opportunity now, desperately trying to get it. And while speaking of the devil, here he is giving it to Lind, who, I mean, he has 20 vision and 18 passing. I'm not sure what he's seen there, but it, it wasn't one of our players going through. Disappointing ball by Lind at the end of it. And now Ramos with a chance to ruin the clean sheet, but Toby, for the third time in this game, saves a one on one. He's been very, very good in goal for us. Ball whipped to the back post. Ricky Picky heads it away. I think I've settled on Ricky Picky, by the way. I know some people hate nicknames. Ricky Picky hates you if you hate nicknames. L learn to love them. Either way, one minute left. Is there a chance for Largo to get the hat trick? That's all that matters at this point. I mean, not with Erk playing balls like that. 40 seconds left. Largo, get forward, lad. Oh, yeah, wins it. Plays through Gonzalez. It could be four. Is it going to be four? It absolutely is. Gonzalez, 10 goals for the season already. He is red hot on fire. Boyer on off the bench to get an assist as well is really nice to see. And that completes an absolute demolition job here at Wolves in their back yard garden. I was about to say in their backyard, but we're not American. It's a garden, everyone. Oh, what a lovely, lovely goal that is. And that is going to be that. 4-0, dominant. Doesn't get much better than that. That is an absolutely top draw performance against a team who, before that game, hadn't lost this season. And well, with that result, we go top of the league. And I don't want to get too carried away just yet. But we're blooming good, aren't we? Largo gets mad of the match again. That's his fourth of the game, or of the game of the season. Wow. I mean, apparently we're performing above expectations. My expectations this year are a title challenge. I talked about it already this year. To win back-to-back -back Premier Leagues is tough. To do it in the situation that we are currently in, I suppose, where last year I feel like we were the beneficiary of other teams struggling, is, uh, well, it'd be really good if we could do it back-to-back. -back. It'd be unexpected a little bit as well, if I might say so myself. Either way, lovely, lovely result for us there. A dominant display. We were just by far and away the better team. There's not a lot you can argue about with that scoreline. The XG was significantly in our favour. And Wolves, to be honest, were a little bit disappointing. But anyway, folks, that's going to wrap up everything from me today. Lovely little double header, Two nice wins. Good to see the youngsters get some game time and develop in that first match. The win against Wolves. A cherry on top of a very, very nice cake. In terms of when we're going to be back next time, I'm not entirely sure yet. We may come back for the game against Milan at the start of November. I think we shall wait and see. But anyway, until next time, whenever that may be, it is me, Jack. I'll see you guys tomorrow, and I will talk to you guys in a bit. I'm out.